and welcome to Graph. Or Graph. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the intro? <laughs> I I usually will like write it out and like read it. <laughs> yeah, I do that too. Hi, and welcome to Graph 101 from Intune.training with Jake, Johannes, and that special extended guest that just won't go away, Sean. Hey, Sean. Hey, guys. Hey. I don't know when to leave. <laughs> we like you around here. So, <laughs> so today we're going to be talking a little bit more about Graph. Uh, really, today we're going to be talking a little bit about how to create users. Um, using Microsoft Graph, uh, we've got a lot of fun in store, and I don't know when to stop talking. Hey, I'll, I can take over at that point. Um, I, like I mean, it. let's just dive right in. Like we can switch over to uh, my machine. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Awesome. So over on the left-hand side here, you'll see that we have the script that we were working with last time. Again, you know, I can we'll include the uh, links out to GitHub to download this if you didn't grab it from the original video. Uh, but we're going to, you know, dive in a little bit more because last time all we really did was, you know, run this get method um, to return our users. And obviously, you know, just getting that information is a little bit boring. Uh, so we want to spice things up a little bit. Um, in this case, we want to actually, you know, create, delete, you know, maybe update a user. Um, and over on the right hand side, you'll notice that I have the lovely Microsoft Docs page open on how to do that exactly. Well, that seems helpful. Right. Yeah. So, oh, and I'm, I'm misclicking already. We're off to a great start. But in the actual docs, we can actually go and look, you know, what permissions are actually required for, you know, this particular endpoint to work. Um, you know, earlier we did create uh, a delegated user read write all option for our Azure app registration. Uh, and then we're going to use a post um, request. Yeah. And if I scroll down a little bit, you can see um, in the request body all the parameters that are actually required in order for this to function. So we've got, you know, account enabled, display name. The on-premises immutable ID isn't required unless you're, you know, federated domain. Um, your mail nickname, password profile. Um, you'll notice that there is a hyperlink here because there are some additional things that you'll want to include here. There's uh, three different options, you know, force change password, you know, with MFA or without, and then whatever you want your actual password to be. Um, and then lastly, you know, probably the most important is going to be your user principal name. That's really all you need to start getting a user going. Yeah. Um, and if, if you can, can actually uh, scroll back up real quick, Jake, I just want to call out one thing that we, we kind of glossed over. So if we look at the HTTP request, you know, this is just showing it's a post to slash users. So the, the one thing I wanted to call out here is in this case, all we're going to do is we're just going to append the slash users onto our graph endpoint. So if we're going to the v1.0 endpoint, we're going to just do our graph.microsoft.com slash v1.0 slash users. Um, and it, when you're looking at this oh. in some of the more complex requests, you might see other information as well. But uh, I just wanted to call that out in case anyone wasn't familiar with quite what that slash users meant there. Oh, yeah, that's a great call out for sure. Yes. Well, with that, let's uh, kind of keep going down here and see what we'd see. Now we see what we'd expect as a response. Uh, and then we kind of get down to examples. Um, obviously, on some of these more, you know, simple, you know, things like creating a user, they're going to have some pretty decent examples out there. Um, but right away on the HTTP option, you know, we can see we've got that. It's a post. It's to that, you know, graph URL endpoint. So let's actually come over into our script here and scroll down a little bit because we're going to use the second section here since we're going to actually need a body. But in the method, you know, we can type in that it's going to be a post. The URI, I'm just going to copy from over here. We're going to paste that in as well. And then we get down to the body here. Um, I'm not going to copy it from here. I'm going to actually pop over to the PowerShell tab and I'm going to copy it from here. So we're going to grab all this information here and we're going to add it into the body that we've got here. And we're going to edit a couple different things here because I obviously don't own the contoso.onmicrosoft.com address. So we're going to add sure? to that training. Seems plausible, or right. Any ideas there, guys? That all look good so far? That looks good to me. Awesome. Uh, and I think, you know, we should be good at this point. So uh, first of all, oh, go ahead. Just one other quick call out. If you click back on your HTTP request, I just wanted to point out that it uh, in the HTTP, uh, sorry, in the docs page, gotcha. there you do get your content type called out again. Um, here, you've already got it saved in. You didn't mention it up above. Content type is a required part of this request. 
Um, so here we already had it up in our headers. Oh. So that's just being included there. Um, yeah, we should not need to edit any of that information really yeah. um, for this particular, or basically anything that we're doing. Um, the header should remain the same uh, throughout. Exactly. Yeah. And, and there is, and before you run the sticks, just so we don't hit any problems, uh, keen viewers might have noticed that the um, that that the HTTP example uses camel case. So, for example, like the uh, account enabled has camel case, and in and graph is case sensitive. So you will need it. Will have that. to be. Yeah. The PowerShell doesn't seem to be as count uh, if you're using it through the PowerShell commandlets. It, it's not as case sensitive, but if you so when you use say camel this, case, you're saying I need to like change all the first letters here or something like yes, that. Yes, the the first letter is lowercase, and the uh, the first letter in the second word. Well, what do we call it? the second word in the uh, every other word? Yeah, every yeah. other word ha that that is uppercase so it kind of looks like a camel oh awesome yeah. well we go we, we went and changed that mm -mm. so all right so now that we got that changed uh let's go grab our authentication information up here because we're obviously going to need to authenticate first right sounds like so a good idea run that you know we're going to do our good old device login here we're going to grab our code we're going to paste it in over here and if you needed a reminder, once again, Ben is a wiggle. He's a backup guitarist for them. Does a great job. And now we're signed in. Awesome. Again, we're going to skip over this first section. We'll come back to this a little bit later. But we're gonna we're gonna grab you know our method URI body and then this invoke um, rest method option right here. And let's uh, just run it real let's quick. See what, happens. what happens? Uh oh, oh you ran the entire the wrong button. button. Welcome, welcome to Intune Training, folks. Uh, we'll go run ahead selection. and write one yes. here. Run selection, and oh, we got we got an error. What's uh, uh, what could it possibly be? Did we get a remote server yeah. returned an error? Interesting. What could it be? Any ideas, guys? I wonder. Maybe try after this. Uh, convert like, your body to JSON. So like good old body equals body, and then we're going to pipe it into convert. Convert to JSON. Let's try that. OK. I can maybe see what you're talking about there. Oh, especially since you know up here we were talking about the content type. We It's got to be a JSON, yeah. right? JSON. JSON. And let's not hit this guy. Let's hit the run selection option this time around. We're learning. Oh, ooh, look we're at that. that. We got a Dell V. So I guess we can pop in here, give us a quick refresh and see does a Dell show up? Maybe another refresh? You know, give it some time. Have you thought about refreshing it? I think I can hit it a couple more times. I Just thought you had more. it that time. There we Ooh, go. There she is. There's our Dell Vance. Uh, so that's awesome. So we, we obviously got a creation down. Um, now, I know that there's a ton of other options that you can add in here. Um, the docs do cover quite a bit of all the different parameters and things like that that you can pass in. Um, but we've got that squared away. I mean, that wasn't too bad. I mean, aside mm -hmm. from the camel case and having to add the convert to JSON, uh, relatively, it's not, not pretty harmless, I'd say. I mean, what do you guys I think? think? That worked pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But um, well, I think next we want to, you know, let's let's update this specific user. Um, so like, you know, that's, you know, we're currently doing a post, you know, let's turn that into a patch. Yeah. Um, and we need to specify the user at the end. Remember, you know, earlier when we were doing graph Explorer, we were just grab, you just simply type in that person's UPN or user principal name. So in this case, just Adele at Intune.training. It's a Dell V at Intune.training. Ah, good call. Good call. That's why you and, pay me the big bucks. Right. And then let's get rid of some of this extra body information that we have. And, ooh, got a little bug flying around there. Interesting. Um, and let's, you know, add some different descriptor or, you know, options. So I know, like, job title is one. Um, we can do, like, hey, uh, Sean's ex-boss, maybe? Uh, I mean, if Adele is my ex-boss, maybe I mean, we should Sean's disable her account. 
<laughs> yeah, definitely. If she's your ex, for sure. Um, so that's account enabled equals. I want to do false. And I think that looks good. Again, that's we want to get a look at JSON, all that fun stuff. So let's grab this. And let's run that selection. Okay. So uh, success. Let's refresh here. Let's go into Adele. We Play the way game. Down into properties. Oh, look at that. Huh. Sean's ex boss. Now, what do we do with Sean's ex boss? Well, I don't know. What do you think? I mean, we've already disabled their account. You think we should just get rid of it? I mean, let's just get rid of it. That's... What was that, Sean? I said, let's just get rid of it. All right. That works for me. Um, so obviously with a you know post and a patch, we needed to have that body. But we don't need a body when we're doing a delete. That's where we can come back up to where we had our get earlier. Just simply change that to delete. And again, just simply add in that UPN. So Adele V at Intune.training. And we're going to grab that selection. Oh, and we need to invoke Rev's method, of course. And let's run that selection. Success, no, no errors, anything like that. Let's go back to users. Give that a quick refresh. Just like when we created. Got to maybe, refresh, maybe refresh some time. more. Boom. And, and she's gone. Gone. It's been fun, Adele. <laughs> awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean, creating users, like using this particular script and just kind of, you know, adding in a couple things and different, you know, descriptors and whatnot, not too bad, I'd say. Yeah. Typical Perfect. life cycle stuff for a user account. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's obviously little gotchas. You can get really fancy, throw this stuff in like job batches and stuff like that. You know, maybe we'll get into that in the future. Um, but, you know, there's other things we'll dive into, uh, I'd say, next episode. Unless Absolutely. there's anything else you guys want to add. I think I'm good. Yeah, same. See you next episode. Thanks a lot, everybody.